physical applications of integrals, kinds of questions students typically have trouble with. The hardest thing about these questions is reading the question, uh, understanding what the question is asking of you. Uh, it uh, becomes easier, like on most things, uh, easier the more of them that you do. Read the questions carefully. Go through them and extract the information from them as you read them. And once you've finished answering the question, go back and read the question again and check that you've answered the question as it's been asked. Some of these can get quite lengthy in their solutions. Not that it's difficult, but they can get quite long. And you might uh, forget what the actual goal was, was what, what, you were, what you were originally asked for. All right, so let's make some notes to that effect. So the main difficulty here main difficulty here is interpreting the questions. So a lot of students, they lose confidence here thinking, I don't know what to do. It's not that you don't know what to do. Most of the time it's that you don't understand what the questions are asking of you. Right. Important to understand the difference. Important to understand where it is in the problem that you're having trouble. Right. And for these types of questions, most students have trouble at the start reading the question. It's not easy. Um, so my advice is uh, read the questions carefully. Extracting, does it say extracting? Extracting data as you go. Uh, most of these questions will be with respect to time. Uh, we're doing calculus, right? It's the, it's the mathematics of change, and most of the questions we ask will be as things change with time, but it, it's not necessary. It could, be, it could be a volume that changes with the height or something, right? Uh, or the depth. Maybe, okay, you say I've got a container, the volume of water might change with the depth of water. All right. Uh, but, yeah, most of the time they, they are with respect to time. So most of these questions will be with respect to time. And you should be getting used to the language that's used here with respect to We must be in calculus with respect to time. Uh, and the key term the key term used will be rate. Right? If it just says rate and doesn't necessarily tell you with respect to, it means with respect to time, rate. So it's it's Time is implied if it, if it just says rate. Uh, so rate will imply that I have something changing with respect to time. Uh, now, uh, you've already done these uh, questions in terms of differentiation. Uh, now you have to apply apply integration. So the questions that we'll be doing in this particular section will require integration with respect to time. So maybe then 
equal 10. as a consequence of d over dt. Uh, these questions will then require integration, integration, wrt, I'm getting very lazy, with respect to time, curvy t. All right, so example one, The rate at which an ice cube melts is given by minus it's not a dash, it's a minus. Minus 375t squared centimeters cubed. Make that cubed clear. Cubed per hour. Uh, this is a little bit of a strange ice cube. Uh, the longer it's out for, the faster it, uh, the faster it apparently melts. I should have thought of that when I was making up this question. P Probably makes more sense if it slows down. There'd be less surface area exposed as it was melting. Anyway, we're not here to model this accurately. We're here just to answer the question as it's given to us. So many mathematicians will work hand in hand with theoreticians, uh, uh, like a, maybe a physicist is trying to model this particular situation. And this is his model. And he said, can you please work this out for me? In this case, he hasn't thought about it very clearly. In any case, we can still fulfill his request or her request. Um, and what they want to know is find the time taken for an eight, so we've got an, for an eight liter ice cube. To melt completely. Complete Ellie. Whoa, I started. Complete Lee. Find the time taken for an eight litre ice cube to melt completely. All right, so as you're reading over this question, I mean, there's only really two bits of information here. There's this one and this one. And this one you told is the rate and uh, it's per hour. So it's with respect to time. So you're immediately going to write down, oh, and it's a volume, right? Cubic centimeters. So, and we're not in SI. We don't have to be, the units could be whatever. So, we immediately write down that dv to t is this minus 375 t squared. And we're after the time taken for it to melt completely. So we want when the volume gets to zero. So we need an expression for volume. So to find that volume, we have to get rid of that to t effectively. So the volume will be the integral of minus 375t squared to t. Getting a little fancy there. It's better. Uh, super simple piece of integration. This one, 375. So watch me make a mess of it <laughs> on 3t cubed. And plus c. Now... Word of caution here, some people want to, I think, oh, I'll move that out there, which means that minus sign is out front of all of this and then that will become minus C. If you do that, you're going to run into trouble. It's not going to make any sense. Uh, you can't, you can't give this any sign. So plus C's, um, it's, it, 
difficult to explain, but if you put a minus C there, you're imparting some kind of information upon the constant. Yeah, if it's plus C, you're not, right? Minus is effectively, you're changing the constant. So whatever it is, you want to flip it. Uh, we don't want to flip whatever the value of the constant is. I want the actual value of the constant, so this has to be a plus. All right, so note the, note the sign here, right? Uh, this has to be positive. If you don't, you'll trip up later and things will go horribly wrong. So you have an expression for the volume then. No, you don't. You need to solve for, for t. Uh, so I can divide by three. So three goes into that. Yeah, it does. 125. So V equals, man, that I is messy. I, V is 125 T cubed plus C. Now we need to solve for C. So I'm running out of page. Whoop. There we go. Uh, so when, oh, oops, doop, doop, doops. How long have I been doing this for? Right, so when t equals zero, so we need some kind of boundary condition in order to begin to solve for here. So the boundary here is when time equals zero. I know that that is equal to eight liters. Eight liters is 8,000 cubic centimeters. Uh, you wouldn't normally have to know things like that. The question would probably say 8,000 cubic centimeters. I'm probably being a little too clever or the conversion would have to be given to you. Uh, so that is 8,000, that is 8,000 equals minus one, two, five, T cubed plus C, uh, T is zero, zero cubed plus C. So that thing is zero. So C equals eight, thousand not minus eight thousand right had you had you put a minus sign in here you'd be in all kinds of trouble at this point uh, c is eight thousand so our equation for volume becomes and it's really nice if you write this out the equation becomes i only have the one equation so you can just write becomes i'll write that equation for volume becomes volume equals 8,000 minus 125 T cubed. And it helps to highlight that. The examiner is going to be looking for that. You're going to be looking for that when you go back and you, because you're going to be asked to solve it in some way, right, using it. Uh, and what we are asked for is the time for it to melt completely. So melt completely is when uh, volume is equal to zero. So when the volume equals zero, I get zero equals eight, thousand minus 125 t cubed so t cubed equals eight thousand on 125 8 thousand one twenty sixty four sixty four so t is the cube root of 64 four four sixteen four sixteens 64, so it's four hours. Just check your units there. Hours, hours, hours. All is good with the world. It is hours. Uh, four hours, and we're done. We've answered the question. Go back and read the question. Uh, find the time taken for an eight liter ice cube to melt completely. The time taken is four hours. Done. Important. Go back, read the question again. Check that you've answered the question that you've actually been asked. Uh, example two. 
no, let's no, let's 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 write out because the second big class or the major class question should you'll be asked to do with physical motion and there will be the terms displacement or position, velocity and acceleration. Uh, and again, you've looked at these in terms of differentiation. You have to do the same with with uh, integration. So let's just write a note on that first. So we have already examined We've already examined the terms associated with motion in the context, that's a good word, context, context of differentiation. So it is important to remember the relationship. Uh, relationship is not quite the right word, but let's let it lie. To, to remember the relationship between each when integrating, which is what we're trying to do today. So just as a note, let's draw a table. So, uh, Table, yeah, let's do a table. So I'll put the name of the thing here. So we're going to have displacement. Oh, position. Sometimes we just have the word position. Uh, velocity is the other term. Come on, I don't, yes. And acceleration. And as you've looked at, velocity is the rate of change, uh, velocity is the rate of change of displacement with respect to time, and acceleration is the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. Now you've got to think of those in terms of uh, integration. So. How do you get displacement? What should we call this column? Uh, achieved by, by, by. Achieved through So I need to integrate, integrating velocity. So if I integrate velocity, I'll get displacement. If I integrate acceleration, I'll get velocity. And the rate of change of acceleration doesn't have its own name. <laughs> so I'll leave that blank. Uh, symbol. And you already know these. So position, we can call it X. Ah, uh, you might see as it, it could be anything really. Uh, sometimes you might see uh, S. Uh, in maths, quite often we just want X, or at least the position coordinate in the direction that we're concerned with. It could be X, it could be Y, it could be Z. Uh, X if we've only got the one dimension. Uh, velocity uh, is a V. But we could have x dot to show that we've 
it's the first derivative or x dash like this to show that we're x prime, I guess, that it's been differentiated once and acceleration of course is a. I could have shown that I differentiated velocity once or perhaps I differentiated x, the position twice. So on and so forth. And let's put that in brackets because we don't generally want to use that one. All right, so it's important that you remember these particular names, what they mean, and how you get there. I just want to squash in somewhere a note about that these are with respect, these are with respect to time. So with respect to time. Uh, it is possible to relate velocity, displacement, and acceleration. Or at least velocity and acceleration in terms of displacement, maybe. Uh, but in this case, we're just talking uh, with respect to time. All right, so now I'll launch into an example. That's really easy. A ball is dropped from a window uh, yeah it'll do 12.6 meters above the ground find the it could be asked many things find the excel, no uh, you have to be given the acceleration find the velocity Find the velocity of the ball just before, in the instant before it hits the ground. Find the velocity of the ball just before it hits the ground and how long it takes how long it takes to get there do I, is it implied I don't know to get there to get to the ground and how long it takes to get there uh, this we better say I want Estimates of two decimal places, so both two two dp and use uh, the acceleration due to gravity. I've just dropped a ball twelve point six. Uh, not that it matters, but we'll use three significant figures here. Uh, meters per second per second. Don't often see it written like that, just for fun. All right, so insert another page, please. Thank you. Go back to the pen. All right, uh, solution. Now, this thing's just been dropped straight from the window down. So I'm going to assume that that's positive and that this is zero. My origin's up there and down is positive. Just save me making a mistake with negative signs. People seemingly have trouble with minus signs. I do. We drop them all the time. Let's avoid them when I can. So that allows me to write the acceleration is equal to 9.81. Positive. Straight down. Velocity, as we've been told, where I want to find velocity, I need to integrate the acceleration. So... So, so, so the velocity is equal to the integral of acceleration with respect to time. In this case, that is going to give me, it's over the page, let's write v again. v equals the integral of 9.81 to t. 
which is going to be equal to Now I should try and save a little more space. Yeah, let me do that. Let me let me reduce my integral sign. Although this is in the last example, it's quite lengthy. Let me just squash it in together. So velocity then is the integral of acceleration to t, which is the integral of 9.81 to t. And nothing could be simpler. I get 9.81 t plus c. So then I need to use my boundary conditions to try and find out uh, a value for c. So my boundary condition is when I first start, the velocity is zero. So when when t equals zero, the velocity is zero. So I get this situation, 0 equals 9.81 times 0 plus c, which implies, oh, let's have a therefore, therefore c equals 0. Uh, so my equation for velocity is, so, and it's nice if you can write these out in full equation for velocity is v equals 9.81 t. And good idea to highlight that. Both you and the examiner will be looking for that. Uh, can I answer any of these questions? I need the velocity before it strikes the ground. I do need velocity, but I need to find out how long it takes before I before it gets there, how long in terms of time? Uh, so I need to I need to go again. Uh, blue pen in hand. Yes, yes, it is. So now let's let's go again. I know, I know that x is the integral of the velocity with respect to time. Why is there an extra little dot in there? I need to integrate velocity. So I integrate my expression for velocity, which is here. 9.81 t to t with respect to time. That is 9.81 t squared on 2 plus c. 9.81 it's 4.905 t squared plus c. Now, do I have something that allow me to solve for c? Well, I've said that I'm going to use this as zero. So, When t equals zero, x is zero. I zero equals four point nine zero five times zero squared plus c. So c equals zero. So equation for position is x equals 4.905 t squared. And again, let's not lose that. All right. Now, I'll ask for a velocity. I can't find that just yet. How long it takes to get there, there being the ground. The ground is how far away? 12.6 meters away. So when we're at the bottom, 
when x equals 12.6 meters, we have 12.6 equals 4.905 t squared. So t equals the square root of 12.6 on 4.905. This is not looking pretty. Square root 1.60. How many decimal places? Two. One point six zero, and we are in seconds. Seconds. Did I actually mention seconds? Ah, uh, yeah, here. All right, so we're in seconds. Good, 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 good. And of course, uh, there's a. If I take the square root. There could be plus or minus, there could be two answers there to give me that particular t squared. Uh, t, of course, is um, greater than zero. Let's just acknowledge that by putting that on the side. Now I have a value for t. I can go back and plug it into here. So, because that's what the question's asking for, right? This is, this is part of what makes these questions difficult, is going back, looking at the question, think, well, what did it ask me for? Well, how long does it take, right? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> find the velocity just before it strikes the ground. So I found how long it takes. So when t equals 1.60 seconds, I need to find velocity. My expression velocity I just looked at is 9.81 t. Which is, oh no, substitute trade in. 1.60. So one five seven two, and we're in meters per second. Helps to be explicit. So the velocity. Before it reaches the ground is 15 point 15, 15.72 meters per second and it takes 1.60 seconds to reach there. V1572, 1.6 seconds. Again, super important. Go back, you finish now. Go back, read the question again. Find the velocity of the ball before it hits the ground. Yep, done that. And how long it takes to get there? Yes, I've done that. I've answered the question successfully. Hurrah. All right, so just to just to recap and go back over what we've looked at. Uh, the main difficulty is interpreting these questions. Read them slowly, right? Read them slowly, carefully, and extract the data as you go. Most of these questions are uh, in terms of respect to time, which implies you're looking at something like this, the key word is rate, right? There'll be rate written somewhere, uh, which uh, these kinds of questions are going to require require you to integrate with respect to time. So in my example, my first one here, uh, this thing is the rate, and I integrated with respect to time, and I found an expression for velocity. I use the boundary conditions to solve for C, and I end up with my final expression there. You can then use that to go about an answer, whatever the, it is that the question is asking. And so in this case, it was, well, what happens when it gets to zero? That'll take me four hours. 
All right. A lot of these questions are going to use the terms uh, displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Super important, again, that you understand how they are related to each other or how you get from one to the other. You get to displacement by integrating velocity. You get to velocity by integrating acceleration, or as you already know, by differentiating displacement. And you get to acceleration by differentiating velocity. Uh, the rate of change of acceleration doesn't have its own name, but if you were given that, you would integrate it to find uh, acceleration. All right, well, that does it for this lesson. My name is Keith Johnston. Thanks for watching.